welcome to my YouTube channel. So for those of you that don't know, my name is Angelica Christina and I am a trans actor, model, activist, public speaker, media personality, several things. She does it all. She does it all. She does all the things. It's finally happening. I'm gagging. I did not think that I would get to this point where I was ready to finally make a YouTube channel. It's been something that's been on my mind for several years now and here we are. Here I am finally filming from a cell phone so it's not as professional as I would love it to be. However, this is the baby stages of my YouTube channel and so I'm just really excited to be here and I'm excited to be talking to you folks today. If we have any TERFs watching, please see your ass to stage left. You, you don't need to watch this video because this is not for you. This is for community. This is for folks that are looking to be educated. This is for those folks that are open-minded. This channel, this video is for them. It's not for you fucking haters. So, see your ass left. Bye. Peace out. Deuces. Uh, but yeah. Today is the day that I have my pre-op appointment for FFS with Dr. James Bradley in New York. Facial feminization surgery. So excited. Now, can you tell? Can you tell that I'm excited? Because a girl is excited. She's really, she's lit. She's lit. She's excited. She's ready to party. Marry that. She's excited. So excited. Um, it has been a long time coming. Similar to this YouTube channel, this procedure that I'm about to have has been a long time coming. I've wanted it for a very long time. As a trans woman of color, we experience so much hatred, so much violence in public spaces, and a lot of the violence that I've faced in public from complete strangers strangers on the street yelling at me that's like that's a man pointing at me yelling screaming like that's a man that's a dude for simply existing in public spaces um it has been really traumatizing i'm not gonna lie it's been really traumatizing and it's stuck with me even now and i know that there are a lot of people in my life um there's probably a lot of people that are going to be wa watching this video and thinking to themselves, why would you want to change your face? Why would you want to do anything to your face? Um, that seems crazy. Uh, you seem so cis-assumed. I've heard this from folks a lot, and I want people to understand that for me, a lot of the trauma that I faced earlier on in my, in my life, in my teens, when I first started dressing as my authentic self, starting to live as my authentic self, there was a lot of folks that were really cruel, a lot of strangers that were very cruel and, and mean and, and violent towards me. And so... I still have a lot of that, like I get really tense thinking about it because it's something that sticks with you for the rest of your life. And so I have always wanted to pursue FFS. It's always been something that's been on my mind as early as my teen years. Um, I really just want to look the way that I feel on the inside and that's really important that's part of my journey is to look like the person that I've always envisioned and 
it's not to say that I want to change my face entirely. It's not that I want to look like an entirely different person. I still want to look like me, but I just want to look like a more feminized version of me. I want to be able to step outside my door and feel comfortable, feel confident. And with my, my face as it is right now, I just, I don't. Um, I don't entirely feel comfortable in my skin. I don't feel comfortable going out in public spaces. Um, and a lot of it sometimes is in my head. A lot of the fear and anxiety around being outside. I just want to go through with this procedure to make myself feel more comfortable. And so I'm going to go over a little bit of what I'm planning on doing. So I'm doing a, a hairline lowering. So I'm going to have a tiny little itty bitty forehead. Hang on, hang on, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ah. Let me stop. Also, don't mind my, my lack of nails. They look like trash right now. You know, shit happens. She's a little bit broke, so she can't really get those... <laughs> Her, her, her nails going on so also uh, like I'm giving my nails a break because they are a bit brittle so I'm trying to let them heal and let them sit and simmer so they can be powerful and strong and all the good things so I'm having a hairline lowering I am shaving my brow bone and all of this down all of this this Yes, she's also an extravaganza, if you didn't know. But yeah, she is shaving all of this down. And <laughs> I say she like, as if I'm talking about myself. My surgeon, Dr. Bradley, will be shaving all of this down. And I'm having a cat eye lift. So she's going to be nice and snatched. She's going to give her the kit, darling. <laughs> Oh, that, that sounded so bad. <laughs> that sounded so bad. Wait, let me, hold on. There we go. There we go. It was, a, that was a little better. We, that, we can work with that. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I'm going to have a cat eye lift. Um, and so all of this is going to be lifted up. Having a rhinoplasty. Honey. Honey, baby, when I say that she's about to be snatched, she's about to be snatched. She's about to look like a doll. She's about to look like supermodel, which is basically what I told Dr. Radley. I essentially told him, like, I want the Bella Hadid treatment. I want to be snatched. I want to look like a doll, like a supermodel Latina doll. And so that's not all. That is most certainly not all. So she's. Uh, <laughs> so I'm also going to be having um, fat transfer to my cheeks and also to my top lip. I love, 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 love my lips. They've always been my favorite feature about my face. However, I just want a little, you know, like boop boop ba doop, a little like you know just a little little puffier a little little slight lift if you will and I'm also having um, uh, buccal fat which is the fat that exists in your cheeks like right here I'm having that removed and also I'm having a uh, lower chin lipo so my darlings when I say she's gonna be snatched She's going to be snatched. That is uh, the, the goal in which I'm trying to reach with this is I am trying to be just a bit more of a hyper-feminized version of my face as it is now. And I definitely, going into this procedure, and a lot of folks ask me, they're like, are you nervous? Are you scared? 
The only thing that I'm nervous about is the recovery. I am, I'm such a baby when it comes to, even when I'm sick, like I am such a baby. Uh, I, even though I do tend to take care of myself for the most part, um, I'm always wishing that there's someone else to like help me because I don't have familial support. Um, I, my blood relatives, and I'll get into this in another video, um, that discussion about family and where are they, that's not really for this video to do. Um, I'll definitely discuss that in another video for those of you that don't know. But um, I do, I'm blessed to have a chosen family, very blessed. And yeah, um, so am I scared about the procedure? I'm not scared about the procedure. I have full confidence in my surgeon and in his team. I have done my research extensively, like done my research on this particular surgeon, on the procedure itself. I feel as though I'm really prepared to go into this procedure. It's really just the recovery. The recovery is going to be, I already know, the recovery is going to be the worst part of it for me is healing and also having a lot of patience because from what I've heard, from what, from what I've researched, the recovery is a long, it's, it's a year. So it's going to, it's going to take a year for me to see the full results. And with that comes a lot of patience, a lot of patience. And so that's the part that I'm most nervous about, honestly, is the recovery. Uh, but having met with my surgeon, Dr. Bradley, I was very specific. I brought examples of what kind of foreheads I, I thought were attractive, noses, eye shapes, everything. I was like, I like this and this and this about that, that person and this person and that person. I was very, very, very specific. And so I thought it was really important to bring those examples to Dr. Bradley so he could see what exactly I'm trying to achieve with my particular procedure. Because everyone wants something different, right? Like every everyone wants like a specific kind of forehead, a, a very specific kind of nose. Um, and so in order to be thorough, I wanted to bring examples to him and to let him know like, okay, this is what I like about that person and so on and so forth. But y'all, oh, I'm just really excited, as I said. Um, I know I keep saying it, but I am. I've waited for this for so long and it's finally happening. And I'm gonna bring you along on the journey with me. Um, and yeah, we can go from there, but stay tuned. Stay tuned for the adventure. Stay tuned for the procedure, for the recovery. Also, shout out to Babonia. Um, I currently have in some curly hair extensions because your girl has very curly hair naturally and so you know she wanted to add some inches for the day she's going out later after her appointment so yeah girl she's looking cute <laughs> but yeah um stay tuned So we're at Dr. Bradley's office in Midtown Manhattan, um, just waiting to see him. And yeah, super excited. Hello, good to see you as well. You as well. Absolutely. How's it going? It's going well. It's going well. Good. Can you bring your mask down? Happily. <laughs> After about now three, three years. years. Exactly. Oh, goodness. So, okay. 
here, let's talk about everything, and I'm going to work on things here, and the yes. and everything. And so, I, um, I had some questions. Hello, how are you? Good to see you. Welcome. Thanks. <laughs> Um, so I had some second thoughts and um, would like to um, do a little bit of back transfer to my cheeks, she carries, just okay. to, you know, kind of... Uh -huh. So maybe the mailer and up in here? Yeah. Okay. My question is, um, so also second thought, um, uh, removal of the buccal fat. Um, what was your goal there? Uh, just to really kind of like hollow out here. here, just really like yeah, supermodel. Okay. Like snatch. Um, my question, though, is if we do the back transfer, how do we prevent it from, or how does it? How do we prevent it from moving or shifting downward? Well, the fat will, will first of all, we'll bar it from like usually the belly area. Right. It's it's small amount, so you don't really see down there. And then we oh. mark preoperatively where we're going to put it. Okay. Um, we put in like little droplets, so little cells almost. Awesome. Um, so it shouldn't move. Once, cool. If it gets a blood supply, it'll stay. Okay. About 70% of the fat will take and then 30% the body dissolves. Cool. So we'll mark out like where we want it. Okay. Do that in the pre-op area with you sitting and then so, but it, it's not going to move around. Perfect. And if you do like, you shouldn't do silicone, but if you did something like that, it could Ooh. migrate and things like that. But I've heard horror stories. So. Yeah, the fat's um, your own tissue, so Great. it'll stay there. And I'm um, also interested in doing a teeny tiny bit of uh, fat transfer to my top lip just to sort of match uh, the size of my bottom lip. Okay, um, to balance it. Yeah, exactly. So with fat, it uh, usually dissolves in the upper lip just because we're moving, but we okay. can put tissue there. Okay. Um, you can put your own tissue um, from up here, like mm -hmm. fat ship, just to augment to balance it. Okay. That usually lasts better, so awesome. just to let you know. Perfect, yeah. Okay, I'm open to so that. Lip log and the fat grafting and bubble fat. And we're going to take out a little fat down here. Yes. Yeah, okay. Like a little like the lip is you know, snatch. Got it, got it. And then the brow, we're going to obviously fix the transition here. We're right. going to lift the brow, contour out here, mm -hmm. open the eyes up. Okay. Yeah. And then the nose, one of Thinner, better, a little more yeah, delicate tip, bridge. better profile. Mm -hmm. Slight slope. Slight slope, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now the um, procedure, it'll take about six hours. Cool. You'll be um, staying with us overnight, Great. a couple of nights. At home, you just want to take it easy, sleep with your head up like 45 degrees. Okay. You'll be on a soft diet. Mm -hmm. maybe. Oh, I guess you, no, I guess you have, maybe just, yeah, the first few days. Mm -hmm. Um, give you pain medicine. Okay. It'll be both, um, Tylenol, mm -hmm. medicine, carbapentin, and some Motrin when you go home. So you okay. can take all those things. Then you'll have a narcotic to sleep if you need that. Great. You can put your head back. And then after a week, we'll have you start using some nasal sprays. So the thought will be mostly up here. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm in the buckle thought here. The effect is really right like up in here where mm -hmm. kind of Okay. Uh what other questions do you have about um recovery? Yeah. Or getting ready for I kind of did the research and stuff and I feel like I asked like a ton of questions last time. Okay. That's okay. So, yeah, like um, that's what we're here for. Yeah, I appreciate it. So yeah. Much well, I guess you would be have the lip log, so it will be like soft diet yeah. the whole first week. On me, because of the yeah. stitches I'll have for the other lip log. So like mashed potatoes, apple yeah. sauce. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You have a little split on your nose, which comes off after a week. Okay. That's self is swelling also. Oh. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm like, I'm so excited. I know, that's why I'm so soon. I know, I know. Like, I've literally been counting down the day, so, like, 
Okay. Yeah, Karen and right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, my um, my chosen sister is going to be with me uh, oh, the day so of the sweet. procedure. So, oh, um, so I'm going to have so that support supportive. system. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to get a great result. We just have to get you through the process. And yep. get you be able to Exactly. The, I I feel like the the hardest part is just going to be the recovery for me. Yeah. But like, yeah, because I'm kind of a baby with that stuff. But <laughs> otherwise, like, um, I have full confidence. So. Right. We'll see you soon. Yes. For the Amazing. Okay. Amazing. Thanks, Dr. Bradley, you as well. All right. So for the medications, mm -hmm. I know we're at home. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send it to the hospital pharmacy. So okay. let me think. See, so heart surgeon Saturday, so you'll leave like Monday most likely. Cool. And then the pharmacy is open on Monday. The pharmacy is like right near the lobby, so you can okay. the, the you know the uh, doctors and the nurses there will know that you're getting medication from awesome. the hospital. So. Um, you'll be able to pick that up right before you leave, basically. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to send three medications over. Do you have any medication allergies? No. Nope. All right, perfect. So I'll send three medications. Um, one is oxycodone, oh, okay. which is our narcotic. Mm -hmm. You'll take that every four to six hours. And um, you use that only for severe pain. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to give you gabapentin, okay. which you'll also use for severe pain. Oh, I take gabapentin. You do already? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. How much do you take now? <laughs> um, ah. Forget, I believe 20 milligrams. Okay. I, could, I could be wrong. Okay. Yeah. Because I take I take several things. Got so, it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So um, we usually give up 300 milligrams. Okay. I got a pentin. Cool. Um. So maybe you might not need that one since you're already using it. Right. Yeah, you <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Well, I just think oxy might be 300. Yeah. Might be 300. Yeah. Yeah. So then you have mm -hmm. that already to use, which is good. Cool. Um. So oxycodone and mostly is what you'll use for the surgery. Then awesome. for pain, so for sort of severe pain. And then you'll get ibuprofen, which you might already know about probably. It's, mm -hmm. it's Motrin and ibuprofen, same thing. Cool. So you'll take 600 milligrams every six hours around the clock. And I'll keep you covered around the clock so that you're kind of always covered from pain. Awesome. And then you take the oxy when you have that severe pain. Or, okay. you know, like if you already know what's going to happen at nighttime, you take it right before bed. Cool. Take the oxy. So you cool. want to be covered all the time. So those are the medications I'll send to your pharmacy. Um, the Lenox Hill Pharmacy before you go. Okay. Copy that. Um, other things. Uh, for at home, getting ready at home, as you mm -hmm. know, soft foods like we talked about for so the right. first week. So, you know, nothing too hot, nothing too, too cold mm -hmm. in the first week. Um, and then head elevation at home, a couple of pillows at night, so get that okay. ready as well. Let's see, you're pretty much going to take things pillow, easy. So perfect. Should, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, take it easy the first couple of weeks, okay. kind of just like hang out, relaxing, but you can obviously walk around, right. you know, like run a couple of errands, but don't heavy lift and don't bend forward, okay? Oh, copy that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I will definitely be at home <laughs> hiding and hibernating. <laughs> that's so. fair. But you have a friend to support yes. you. That's perfect. Yeah. So maybe that's I, have a couple, I have a couple of folks that come um, visit. Yeah, exactly. That's so nice. so, yeah, I mean, again, the, mo the, the most that I'm really concerned about is like the the mental aspect yes, of it and the, of you know, getting over that hump. Yeah. But otherwise, like, I'm absolutely. Good. I mean, if it helps, you know, like a lot of our patients. Some of them do, do it alone and mm -hmm. they'll end up being okay too if that helps you feel a little better right. as far as just. I'm definitely going to be here. I know. Yeah. Of course, of course. And let us know that if you know if you have any sort of feelings of anxiety a uh -huh. couple of days before, like, you know, heavy anxiety where it feels a little unbearable, we mm -hmm. can give you a little something like the day before surgery oh. if you need. Let us I know. know. Text me, you know, <laughs> or at the hospital if you feel anxious, you know, at the hospital, they can oh. give you a little something too. Awesome. Um, that's of course in severe yeah. experiences. So let's see what else. What else does the hospital will call you the night before surgery to let you know what time they come in, awesome. what to bring, what time your surgery is at, um, visitation policy, etc. They'll okay. let you know. And then the reason why they call you the night before, like it seems kind of like wow, last minute, but it's right. actually just because they make the schedule the night before. Oh, okay. So they work the schedule. So but most likely your case will be early morning. Cool. Probably around, like you probably have to arrive there around 5:45 ish. That's okay. Surgery start around 7:45. Oh, that's good. Like I should prefer early, early morning. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Perfect. Like I like them nice and fresh. Nice and fresh. Exactly. <laughs> You're the only case of the day. Oh, awesome. Yes, actually, that does. Yes. Yeah, perfect. There you go. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Cool. Do you have questions? No. Yeah. Yeah. Earrings. You texted me. Thank you. They were a gift. Okay. <laughs> yes. Obsessed. They're Thank so pretty. You. All right. You texted me the questions and you have two in. Yeah, I'm here. Remember, so. Text me yeah. if you need. Okay. I'll do. We'll Thank see you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.